All right, guys, Shoddy T here. Another Alliance War video. This is number six of the season 22. So far, we're three and two on the season. We're alternating win, loss, win, loss, win. Tier five, tier four, tier five, tier four, tier five. We're back in tier four. Can we get a winning streak? Can we get two wins in a row? So, as usual, we're going to be facing stubborn and basically just highlighting the opponents I plan on facing there. And, and also um, my attack team. We're just going to take out one. So there's been a pretty reliable attack team recently where I've used Claire and Venom, three straight wars. But this time we're going to sub out for Havoc because there's going to be a couple of fights I will need Havoc for. So we're going to start off in path five here. And we're going to, like a repeat of last war, where the first fight is against Mordo. And we're going to use Black Widow once again. Now, some of the fights here are not going to be as clean as the last war. But um, like you see, I got I got intercepted there. But as I've mentioned in previous videos about Claire, if you make a mistake, the SP2, you can heal it back. So not a big deal. And with Mordo, the key is just try to bait that heavy because it's really it's delayed. Like the opponent will probably have a better chance of putting um, Mordo on the the unstoppable heavy node, at least to add a little bit more difficulty to it. I mean, there's still a way to work around it, but that would probably make them just a little bit more challenging where you, you already can't punish the parry unless you throw a special or if you have true strike. And so, but really the general idea against Mordo is to put him in the corner and essentially um, I do a heavy attack whenever his um, power is charging because pretty much 95% of the time he's going to be passive so you can freely use your heavy attack. But this is going to be one of the main fights that I brought Habit for because I was debating this back and forth who I was going to bring for this Nick Fury. Before I brought my attack team, I was thinking maybe I could get away with using Claire or Venom. But Claire, she's not stubborn. And this particular node, the part that makes it difficult is the unblockable, uh, the, the heavy attack you can't interrupt. So, And that makes Nick's second life a little bit more difficult, especially if you're not a stubborn attacker. Uh, so Venom, I probably could have used Venom for this. And really, I put, I put a uh, mutant... Attack boost, uh, I mean, a power boost, but you're gonna see I really didn't need it, or if I would have used it, I should have used it sooner. I should have used it in the first life, and then just methodically um, get it done in the second life. So it, it would have shortened the fight if I used the boost properly, but it turns out I didn't really need the boost, and it does take quite a bit of time to get the first life down. So what I'm doing here is um, slowly but surely letting the uh, plasma feedback damage build up. Now I actually helped it by getting hit because every time you bleed havoc, it puts a uh, a plasma debuff on the opponent. So that's the reason why he lost a good chunk of health just by bleeding me. But it didn't really take a lot of my health. I mean, he has pretty good uh, resistance uh, havoc does so so that's going to be like the, the i guess the most tense moment of the fight so i'm trying to make sure i have that fury passive so that way when i do launch my special it's going to really hurt him so i want to get rid of stubborn here so it's we're gonna one more time okay now and the fury unfortunately didn't show up there i thought it was going to do so but we're just going to buy some time, and I think we're good. And the thing is, if it didn't kill him, then I had the power boost. 
where I could have got back up to two bars of power at least, where it's unblockable and that should kill him. But ended up just killing him with just that SP3. So that whole time I was building up those passive prowess charges by charging the heavy. So I had five prowesses for that SP3. So that was overkill. So I underestimated. <laughs> I guess because he wasn't on like a middle node or a boss node where the boost probably would have been more necessary. But I got, as you saw, I had plenty of those. I I pretty much, uh, the loyalty store, I pretty much keep keep topping them up whenever certain boosts uh, rotate. Like, of course, the combat regeneration, all that stuff, but also certain class power boosts. So the next fight here, going to have a domino here. And again, it's going to be a non-perfect fight. As you can see there, got hit. And she also has unblockable specials. She also has the node where every time that, that timer under her bar goes down, if I have more power than her, she basically gets my power. So... So unfortunately, I can't really build up to SP2 unless she also has two bars of power. But that's very risky against Domino with Venom. Because if you bleed Domino, she has a, I think, I want to say a 50% chance of shrugging it off and gaining power. Also, if you hit into her block at times, she can also gain extra power. So it has a chance to be a perfect block. So... So really, the whole idea here is just to dash back, do a, a light counter. So it works like a charm, and Venom has like a, a nice reach where it's easier to pull that off. Like him and Warlock, uh, of course, um, Venom pool because they're basically the same body type and reach type. Namor, they have some of the best reaches, light, light attack reaches in the game. So it makes it easier to pull that off. And you'll see that example in another fight later this war. But once again, we got Korg here on the Mixed Master. Now, this particular early on, he was pretty um, reluctant. He was shrugging off every parry, and I was getting myself cornered there. So I don't want to get cornered on this node. So, But it's, he was only SIG 100, so I just bad RNG early on. <laughs> And it's, that's like a, I think it was like a 50% chance to shrug off or 59%. But it seemed like it was 100% the first three or four parries. So, But now we got the space control back. And we're just going to do what we've been doing. Parry, medium light, medium. Now I do get hit by the SP-1 for the first time in a while there. Because you saw in the previous video, it was you know, pretty much dex it every time. But once again, we can heal it back from the SP-1. So, not a big deal. And I, I dash back every time I do my combo because I don't want to, I want to give myself some space for him to do whatever he needs to do so he can charge at me. Because sometimes when you're in close, close combat, after a combo, I just like to give myself space. And also what it does, it kind of induces the opponent at times to do what you want them to do. So, so that's part of the reason why I do that if I, if I got them cornered. So I mess up there. I get hit with an unblockable there. And now he's back to where he's shrugging off the parries. But once again, SB2, heal that back. And really with the Mixed Master node, it doesn't really allow me to change stance. I wish there was a way that you could change her stance by doing something other than a five hit combo, any with a light, because it can be beneficial to change phases quicker, um, especially because I know that flame stage, of course the special attack deals a lot of damage but it, it serves its purpose when you have the rotation to go from one to the other and you'll see an example of that on some other fights here because Claire will be used this war pretty much almost every fight um, 
at least the early fights. So we're almost done here. And again, this is a very uh, methodical fight. I get hit again. So now that one hurt a little bit because it had some prowess charges built to it. So now we got to be a little careful here because the prowess is starting to build up more. And the reason why I kind of wasted the SP1 because I was just trying to get a, a extra hit off a of combo to get the prowess under control. But the next fight here is going to be Thing. Now, this is a common placement. Now, this is a rank one defender. So, like I said, I could probably get this done with Havoc. Keep it simple. Build to SP3. Kill him. But the road to get to SP3 was a bit challenging in this fight. And you'll see. Um, but the idea here is just like with a Nick Fury fight. Um, charge the heavy to build up the passive prowess and also at the same time give the opponent feedback damage. But of course the difference obviously in this fight with Thing, you have to manage the rock stacks and you have to manage the footloose node. So so really the idea, because Thing specials like take like a third of the screen at least or, uh, or a half, you're going to end yourself being cornered quite a bit. So I'm trying to hit into the block whenever I can, like so. So that way when he launches his special, I have enough time, I have enough space to retreat without getting myself cornered. So now I got myself in the corner. I was trying to hit him while he was parried, but that unstoppable was just still there. So I didn't quite time it. So now he throws another special without me given a chance to gain some space, so now we're in trouble again. And like I said, I'm not the best at evading his heavy attack. So now we're just going to throw an SV3 just to get out the corner. Unfortunately, he was stubborn, so this SV3 is going to do no damage. So that's a waste of uh, SV3. So now we got to build back up to a four bar, four or three bars of power. So this fight's a little dicey, to be honest. It's really a little dicey. But at the same time, I always got to keep an eye on the, the rock stacks and uh, making sure that he's, that I'm not getting myself in trouble there. But that's the most important thing. Of course, the node itself is important. But like I said, thing just gives you more things to think about. So here, things are getting... A little tense there, we almost push him to three bars of power, which is another thing we don't want to do against him. And I kind of flirted with it there, but I was just trying to push him back just as, as much as I can. And we almost, we almost got it. And at this point, we're just gonna throw the SP3. <laughs> and he's unawakened, so that does make a big difference here. Now, even if I it still would have killed him had he not had protection because the protection doesn't trigger during the SP3 to mitigate that damage. It triggers after the SP3 if it does more than 300% of your attack. Um, but the next fight here, we're going to have Starkey on the Rage node. Now, I've seen in some upper tier Alliance War videos, I've seen this is a common placement. And the reason why is because Starkey, he's a wet noodle. Um... It's pretty easy to trigger rage against him, and he's a stubborn attacker, a defender on top of that. So you don't want to be in a position where you you can't block him because he already hits hard. So if so, you're gonna end up getting yourself hit um, while he's unblockable because of rage. So it's really two ways to deal with this. You can either quake him, quake and parry, or you can just uh, have another five champ. That's pretty reliable or a stagger champ that's pretty reliable so to really that's what we're doing here with claire and we're also keeping the combo short i did dual this profile just to get an idea what their limber rating was so that way i can realistically know what type of short parry combo i can pull off and it wasn't quite 
where I could do a medium light medium. So I only had enough to do like a two hit combo or heavy. I can do a heavy attack. But if I had like a slow, deliberate heavy attack, like a Archangel or something like that, there's always that small chance he can evade. And like I said, you don't want that. Uh, that's gonna build up his uh, poise charges and make him hit harder. So, so really, this is just another methodical fight or understanding the node. And we just want to make sure that we don't get them out of control. We'll nullify the buffs uh, as they pop up with rage. And then use the SP2 to heal ourselves. So it's really a pretty easy formula here. A parry two hit combo. And this just reminded that duels are your friend. You can duel for multiple reasons. You can duel for the check for limber like I did there. You can duel to check for mystic dispersion if the if the person's top champ is a mystic. You can duel for suicides. You can duel for familiarity with the opponent you're going against. Like I said, I pretty much use duels on a daily basis. Sometimes I use them to show other people how to fight other champs. But also I do it for my own benefit because sometimes you need that refresher but like I said, it also helps you when you're facing cer certain profiles to get an idea um, about certain masteries. Cause that can go a long way how you approach the fight. And unfortunately, in this profile, I didn't have a Mystic as the top champ. So I wasn't sure what type of Mystic dispersion he ha this person had. So if you're not sure, you just assume they have a high level. So I try my best not to flirt with him having close to two bars of power. But once, as I said in the previous video, you only have to worry about taking a crap ton of damage from the SB2 from Longshot if he has that flower passive. So as long as he doesn't have that, the SB2 is harmless unless it hits you, of course. So obviously you just got to just not get hit by it. Now the SB1 also the same thing with if you're not bleed immune. You can also take a ton of damage if he has that flower active. But once again, it's another methodical fight where we're just baiting the SP1s. Yes, the prowess charges are building up, but this is not like the mixed master node. I can just do a full five hit combo to get those charges down pretty quickly there. And, and he's not a stubborn defender, so I don't have to worry about having to parry to get rid of stubborn. But at the same time, his SP1 is kind of difficult to punish, so you have to be very, very precise to punish it. So I just play it safe, just dodge it, and then just just attack him later. So, so that's the end of that fight. All right, next fight, we have Iron Man Infinity War. Um, this is going to be on the Ebb and Flow Intercept, as well as the um, node where... The opponent has enhanced power gain for every debuff, and if they're bleeding, it counts more. Now, I face uh, Iron Man Infinity War quite a bit with Claire during Alliance Quest um, Map 6, where he has that, I think, on that um, Aspects of Genesis at the top of Path Tier 3 and Path like 7, I believe, or Path 8. So... So usually what I do is I just repair heavy with Claire. If he happens to have his molecular armor active, then whenever I try to bleed him, then it just gains me a uh, passive power gain. So anytime the opponent is immune to a certain debuff or whether it's damage over time or just a debuff immune or whatever the case is, Claire actually gains added power. Um, and also builds up more of those mystic charges. So, so right now, just trying to get an intercept in there. But as you can see there, he was immune to the bleed because of the armor and I gained more passive power. So at this point, I'm just trying to see if I can get a quick intercept in there. We're gonna do another SB2 there. And as you can see, I'm using the power steel sp2 this time 
that way I can kind of control the power throughout the course of the fight because I do have a certain game plan of what I want to do. But as you can see, I only taken out 20% of his health and we're a minute and a half into the fight. So I go ahead and get into my incinerate phase and I'm trying to do an intercept so I can have like a fury active so that way when I do the incinerate phase, it's gonna do more damage as you can see there. So I got the intercept just in time. So just like that, we got him almost, we got him over halfway down. Still got three minutes left. So the embarrassing thing you wanna have happen in a war is the timeout on a five minute timer. So I think we're gonna do one more SP2 with that uh, incinerate active. You see, I got another intercept in there. Okay, All right, so we don't do it. We just go straight to the bleed phase. So at this point, I'm trying to get an intercept in there and be able to throw my SP3. It'll pretty much bypass the last 15%, but it doesn't quite go as planned. Yes, and I kind of got greedy with my combo there. It hit, it hit too hard, apparently. I guess the assassin's range, I guess that's what threw it off because I was anticipating I could get a full combo uh, with the enhanced protection where, the one where it wasn't going to get him below 15%. So I'm still trying to get an intercept at this point because I'm not 100% sure if the SP3 would kill him. And then I mess up there trying to get an intercept in there. Now he has his armor up, so I can't intercept because I'll get auto blocked. So at this point, I said, okay, I'm just, on one hand, I'm just stalling, <laughs> making the video longer. But um, but yeah, I could have just did SP3 sooner. But again, some of the fights wasn't as clean as before, but the important thing is that we're we're not boosting so this two straight, I mean, the power boost for the Mutant was the boost I used, but it wasn't necessary. I do use a couple of potions to top top off um, a couple of my champs going into the fight. But as far as like 10%, 20%, 30% boost, uh, they're not going to be used this war either. By the time we got to this stage, we had like a 30 attack, uh, a 30 defender kill edge and wasn't many more opponents left so we pretty much got this in the bag at this point um so we don't have to worry about using uh boosts for bosses and stuff so all of these mini boss fights are going to be unboosted so against uh dr voodoo i made the ricky mistake about the node itself where if a person is has a regeneration buff on them they're unblockable and Dr. Voodoo, he, he has that regeneration buff at the very beginning of the fight. Luckily, his full combo was not unblockable because once he hit me with that buff, anytime you hit Claire and you have a buff on you, she's going to nullify it. Um, so if so, that's the reason why. If, if she has at least one of those Mystic Chargers active. So I want to use that caveat. So I got two of those uh, yellow buffs on me, those lowest. So it makes it more critical that I do not get hit by a special because if I get hit by SP1, it's going to convert those lowest into poison. And if it's an SP2, I mean, it's not going to hurt me. It'll just passively drain power over time or give them a power drain buff depending on if it's an even or odd combo. But... um. And that's a little small thing there you just saw me do there. If you got an opponent that has an elongated special attack against Claire and, and it doesn't like reach you, you can just stand far back and just charge a heavy and it'll actually apply those debuffs to you depending on what phase you're in. So it can just deal a little bit more damage. So just a little small thing there. So we had someone take down the guillotine 99. Next fight, we're gonna have Stealth Suit Spidey. Once again, it's a Spider-Verse champ against a Venom. So the same tactic that I employed against Domino, we're going to apply the same against Stealth Suit Spidey, where he has that double attack medium, and you can punish it by dash back light counter. So you're going to see that quite a bit in this fight. 
and we stand far back to kind of set it up and you do there we go and once again venom has that high reach now if, if you got an opponent that doesn't have a high reach you can you can still do it you can still do a uh a charging medium uh, a medium attack so that way it can definitely reach him but of course with stealth spotty you just have to be wary of him uh randomly evading um but with venom you, you can take the evade part of uh, out of the equation so we're trying to minimize to have to do it with his SP, his SP2. So we're trying to just bait SP1. So I got some brute force damage to me a couple of times trying to bait out his SP1. But I try to get like one small hit in there if that meter is about to run out and just reset it. Because this SP1 does take a, a long time to develop. As you can see there, it's a tailor-made fight there. So got 74% health. So I the now the boss is an unawakened thing, and it makes a big difference. You don't have to worry about triggering protection against some heavy hitting special attacks like Havoc or Namor with the uh Imperious Rex. So even Proxima Midnight. So I thought about using Havoc, but at the same time, that stubborn just didn't want to deal with it as much, having to get rid of it all the time. So I decided to use Venom. Now, it's going to be a tricky fight here because Venom, he doesn't have like a program uh, bleed attack. It's totally random. So you really have to, because it can throw you off when you're trying to, manage the rock stats you're thinking you're pushing the opponent to 15 stacks but if anytime you bleed or cause a hit that normally would bleed thing of course he's bleed immune but if that happens what it does it reduces his rock stacks by three and i think there's like a you can only do that once there's like a cooldown where you can't do it like twice in two consecutive hits. I can't about like a second, like a between a second. So if you do like a combo, that's more than, I forgot how much time, but it's in his profile. If you look it up, um, he'll lose three rock stats, but you can't do it in like consecutive hits in a combo. It's like a little bit of downtime. But the idea here is to... Of course, manage the rock stats. Now, if I get him close to like 12 or 13, what I do, I try my, I try to hit into the block. Because hitting to the block, that's a guaranteed way if, if you want to have him throw a special. But, but I still have to assume that I won't bleed him, and I have to act as if, like I have to act as if right now, I need three hits. But as you can see there. Ended up not being three hits because one of those hits bled him, so to speak. It didn't bleed him, but it reduced his rock stats by three because it would normally be bleed an opponent. Um, so unfortunately, I didn't get a chance to use my SP2 here. So, because I was looking to build to another uh, two bars of power. So we just throw the SP3. Go back in there. Got a nice little intercept there. So now we're hoping four hits will get it to 15. As you can see, it, it triggered the bleed again and triggered it again. So, so just kind of throwing it off just a little bit and again, but this time we're going to hit it to the block and guarantee 15. And now we're going to launch another SP2. As you can see, just take a ton of damage. Now, this that SP2 would have triggered Stubborn. Uh, not Stubborn. It would have triggered Protection if he was awakened. So that would have made the fight a little longer. And a lot of my basic attack hits with all those Furies probably would have kept triggering Protection. So, But again, he's unawakened. So that's the reason why we already had the War one, but I just wanted to see if it was possible to one-shot a uh, thing with Venom. And in this case, it's looking good. Now time is starting to come a slight issue. We got less than two minutes left. We still got a third of his bar left. So 
So it's important that we get to SP2 this time and not go to SP3. And once again, I'm just keep reversing those rock stack counts. Didn't want to do an SP2 right there because I'm not sure if it's going to trigger bleed. And last thing you want to do is have a special attack get interrupted. Now, I tried to hit into his block, but he wasn't holding the block yet. So I kind of got a little careless there trying to get that 15 stack in there. So unfortunately, that pushed me to three bars again, which I didn't want to do this time because all of this animation actually counts against the clock. So it's like a five to 10 second SP3. So now we got less than a minute left. So now we're a little worried that we may time out. Um, but good news is right now we're in Assassin's range. Now we have True Strike active. So it pretty much ignores all that physical resistance that thing has now, those 10 physical resistance and armor. So, so we're Cutting it close though, man. We're cutting it real close. We're cutting it real close here. And again, I'm thinking at this point, we're just gonna hit into the block probably. And there you go, waste it's heavy. Hit into the block. And I was gonna literally hit into the block and throw an SB2. That would have definitely killed him. But we got the one shot. Um, once again, no deaths this war, no boosts, and we had a big cushion, so we won the war. Sorry, we're going, we're going streaking through the quad and into the gymnasium. All right, guys, but hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please like, share, and subscribe. And again, we're looking to reach a thousand subscribers and for starters.